had an officer in the army, I could go to jail. And I don't want to go to jail because I have a family. I get a little choked up when I talk about that. I didn't want to be a laborer anymore. So I joined the army and I went to England. The United States uh, Army uh, sent engineers to rebuild all the airstrip that was built, it was bombed by the Germans during the Second World War. Hmm. And you had, you had, Lock, you had Lake and Heath, Moseworth, uh, Stansted, Bryant's Norton, and I was at Stansted. So you guys use Stansted now as a civilian airline, airport, I understand. Yeah. Well, Stansted, we, I helped build that airstrip. I was there 18 wow. months. Then I went back to, uh, back to America and uh, I went and joined the Airborne, uh, jumping out of airplanes so I can make the extra money so I could feed my family. It was extra money if you, if you were a paratrooper. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave my men. Mm. I was a platoon leader. I had, I had 14 guys in my platoon, young guys from 18 to 22 years old. I was 28. I had just gonna turn 28, and I didn't want to leave those young men. I had trained with those guys for six months at Fort Riley, and they were just kids. It was like my sons. I went back to my men, and I told them, I says, "I'm sorry, I have to leave." And I said, "I'm gonna win a gold medal for you." I get a little choked up when I talk about that. <laughs> So it's definitely something that would have been hard. Yeah, because I lost a couple of men and uh, young boys. And um, I came back and uh, I was sent to Fort Sam Houston, Texas. And, and during that time, I set the world record in a 50-yard nice. dash. I ran five nice. flat in a 50. And I made the Olympic team, 1968 Olympic team. It was the greatest Olympic team ever. So I won a gold medal. We set a world record in the relay at, at uh, 38.2 seconds. And that's when I won the gold medal. The Army newspaper, Army Times newspaper, had me rated as the best physical specimen in the United States Army because of my age, making the Olympic team and winning a gold medal. John Carlos and Tommy Smith was the two guys that stood up to, to hate and, and discrimination in, in, in America and around the world. Mm. Carlos was my roommate. I was called in my commander. He said, Mel, I understand uh, the black athletes getting ready to demonstrate. He says, I understand you're part of it. I said, I'm not part of anything. I said, because I'm an officer in the United States Army and I know better. And I said, but if I was not an officer in the United States Army, I would be right there with them. Mm -hmm. I would be part of the demonstration. But I know being an officer in the Army, I could go to jail. And I don't want to go to jail because I have a family. Mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you something. Look at my skin. My skin is black. I said, even in the military, we have discrimination. I said, I grew up in the South. And what I went through as a kid, the reason I joined the army, because I wanted to get away from that type of uh, environment. And I said, in the army, this is there too. I said, but John Collins and Tommy Smith, they are two brave young men. And if I had not been in the military, I'd have been standing on that victory stand doing the same thing, doing the, the, the silent gesture with my hand in the air, just like them. People call it the black power salute. It's not the black power salute. It's called the silent gesture to let people know around the world that we are human beings. The color of our skin shouldn't matter. We helped build the White House. We fought in wars. I said, we helped build America. I said, why we have to be treated different? We have some of the greatest athletes in the world in America. We had a black president in America. We had people that did great things, the Tuskegee Airmen that flew in the Second World War, the top pilots in the United States Army Air Force. We had people that defended this country. In Vietnam, we had young men that died for this country. What would you say is the, the thing you look back on and say, I, I made it at this point, or this is the thing that made me happiest? The promise I made my mother and my grandparents that I would get a college degree, which I did, Winning a gold medal and taking my mother to Mexico City. So her, she'd never been on an airplane before. To see her son on the track and millions of people around the world watching me and being the person that I am. Just remember the words that came out of my grandfather's mouth that made me be the person I am today. Just to shine, never give up, persevere, set goals. 
So what would you say your, your message is to, to young people um, in the UK for Black History Month? First thing to learn about your heritage, learn about who you are, where your people came from, learn about the suffering that, that they had to endure. Think about that and think about how it's important for you to do better, to shine, as my grandfather said. Listen, read, as my grandfather said, remember? Read, read your history, learn your history, learn about your people, but believe in yourself. Always believe in yourself. I did. I had to believe in myself in order to get that college degree to travel 70 miles to Long Island, New York from West Point Military Academy. I had to believe in myself to be good in the military, to win the Bronze Star, to get the, the, the medals that you see on the wall behind me. Yeah. I had to be who I am. Shine. You have to shine. You can't say, give me, because nobody gives you. You got to go out and you got to earn it. That's the word I give to the England young, young people in England and around the world. Be you, don't be a follower, be a leader.